Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. Uh, in today's video, we will be playing around with Local Stack, showing you how you can set it up. Um, and if you haven't heard about Local Stack, Local Stack is actually kind of like a drop in replacement for you know AWS for your you know local or dev testing environment where you don't want to like you know have another AWS dev account or something that you'd be spending money on. Um, so you're putting it in like your home lab or you know running it locally to be able to test you know your cloud formation or you know creating buckets or just commands. And if you're learning AWS, it's a very kind of neat tool to kind of get started without all the oh i left an rds instance on for you know like three months and now i'm paying like thousands of dollars for it uh situation so uh i figured i shared this with you guys so how you can you know set it up on a server um or pretty much the exact same way locally um and how to use it so let's get started <clears throat> so for for me i'm gonna set it up on a server but you can you know run this if you're running a Linux machine, pretty much you can run this locally on your Linux machine also. Um, and I'm sure because I'm using Docker, you could use, you know, um, Docker with, you know, a Mac or Windows. It should be pretty similar when it comes to writing the commands. So the first thing that we'll do for me is we're going to set up DNS to make sure we can, you know, get to the server. It has a nice entry for it. Um, and then let my Ansible playbooks essentially deploy out all the things I will need for this. So we'll update the CR number and then we'll add a new entry local stack in a 99 and we'll commit that. Awesome. And then what we'll also do is update our Ansible playbooks inventory so that it actually we'll be able to deploy out and run the you know playbooks that we have for our normal setup so we'll add it down here look stack commit that and then from here i'm gonna i'm gonna actually leave this page open um because i'll, I'll show you a playbook it just here in a little bit but um, from here, we can actually just go to our AWX, which is kind of like our Ansible automation, um, you know, GUI server that allows us to run jobs and templates. So I have this all created for my automation playlist video. So if you're interested in all these templates that I have and more in depth on how I created them, um, go check that out. But what we'll be running here is creating a new VM, patching it, installing Docker and Docker Compose, uh, creating certs and setting up Nginx. Now, or Nginx. Now, in this case, we don't really care about certs or Nginx in this case, but um, if it's running, it's fine. It's no biggie. So I'll, I'll need to probably update my playbook so that I don't I don't actually add those in there. But what we'll have is the host name. We'll just set it to local stack. We'll set the IP to what it was, and we'll just set the VM name, which is what will show up in vCenter for me. Um, and then we'll just do a you know dummy. I uh, think this is this is for if you're utilizing uh, engine X with a reverse proxy with certs um, but in this case this does not need any any of that sort so I will probably make these not you know required fields in the future but for now this is the easy way to create it so it'll go through each of these steps as it creates um, but while that happens um, I want to show you the install docker um, playbook here real quick because this this is the important one here. Um, because with local stack, we're going to go with the Docker installation on how to configure it. So you need to install Docker. So essentially, I have it built out where I will add the Docker repository. Um, so I'm using an Oracle Linux 8 box. So I, I'll use yum config manager command, add the Docker repository. And then I will do essentially a yum install Docker hyphen CE. Make sure that Docker is started and enabled so that on boot, it will be working. And then I will essentially go to uh, GitHub and get their Docker Compose release. Now in here, I have it hard coded to be like version 2.5, um, but they probably have actually multiple releases. So like if we were to go here right now, um, you can grab essentially the latest one. So 2.261, you can, you can grab this one and download that too. So. You could just update that to 2.261. 
um, but we all link it to local use a local bin docker compose and make sure it's executable um, so those are the important things that you'll need to know for this um, if you're just installing docker on a linux box if you haven't already so and this will take a few more minutes here so we'll fast forward the video once the machine's ready to actually be used all right, so now that it's installed and everything's set up, we should be able to open up a terminal and type in a local stack dragon local and log in to the machine via SSH. So um, as I mentioned earlier, essentially Docker is installed. Um, so we can see Docker version, Docker Compose is also installed. So we can see Docker Compose version. Um, so those are the two essentially prereqs for this. Um, what we'll do here is now Google local stack Docker and go to their uh, Docker image here, which they'll actually have a Docker Compose. I personally like using the Docker Compose because it makes it easier to kind of read and run it. So we'll create a file called docker-compose.yaml and copy and paste what was in it there. So essentially, what we have here is a very, I mean, simple um, stack here. So the resource is a local stack. We'll get the container name. We'll name it local stack main if we don't specify it. Grab the local stack image. Open up these ports. Now these are important to know uh, when you kind of start looking at all the services. Um, but for now, you won't have to really pay attention to it. Um, so we'll save that. And then we'll do a docker compose up and hyphen D for detach. So this will put it in detach mode and essentially you won't just have it or output to the console. Um, and it will pull the image. This should only take a few seconds depending on your internet speed. Um, but it isn't really too bad at all. So it will finish here pretty quickly. Let's give it a few seconds. All right, so now you can see that it has finished. Uh, it only took a few seconds, so it really wasn't that bad. Uh, we can do Docker logs. You can see everything has started um, on the back end looking at the logs. So with this, this gets a little bit more interesting. So um, what we need to do is actually install AWS CLI. CLI. So what we'll do is install Python 3 pip to install AWS CLI. Um, this is so that you can actually run AWS commands on your machine. Um, and then, so we'll do a pip3 install AWS CLI. And then we can also install the a, uh, AWS local command, um, which will essentially set the endpoint to be localhost so that you don't have to actually do like hyphen hyphen endpoint hyphen URL and then set the endpoint to be um, what it's running on. Um, so we'll just do the same thing. So we'll do pip3 install AWS CLI local. Um, so this just makes it really easy to kind of just run your command. So instead of typing AWS, uh, you would type AWS local to be able to hit your local endpoint. Uh, and then we can do like an SDLS. And this should return essentially nothing because we don't have any buckets created. We can create a bucket by doing just AWS S3 make bucket, and we can make like a test bucket here. Now, if we were to do AWS local S3 LS, we can now see that there is a test bucket and you'll see it's formatted essentially the same as how you would see it. Uh, we can also do, so for, say for example, AWS local S3 CP, we can copy this Docker Compose file to the test bucket. And then we can do an AWS uh, local S3 LS on the test bucket. And we can see that right here, the Docker Compose file does exist. So this is essentially the exact same as, uh, you know, AWS S3, but you essentially have it all locally in the Docker container. So you can easily spin it up, create it, tear it down without even a second thought and not spend any money in AWS hosting it. So great way to test things locally. Um, local stack has a lot of other AWS services that you can play around with. Um, so feel free to check it out. I'll probably make a few more videos on what other things that I can do. But for now, um, this is how you set it up and go have some fun.
So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.